All right, good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Advanced Webinar with J Trader Stocks Trader. Today, uh, we'll be live trading uh, with J Trader. It is in simulation, uh, demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. I'll go through that in just a minute, uh, just so uh, uh, it's to learn. Uh, and um, uh, we do this every Wednesday with J Trader, and tomorrow we have live trading with Scott Pulsini, uh, a futures trader. So I do it uh, two days uh, every week. So let's uh, jump in here and go through the disclosures uh, and uh, get started. Uh, you have uh, uh, J Trader's uh, contact information. If you want to reach out to him, he offers uh, uh, mentoring services, etc. cetera. Uh, general disclosure, uh, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Uh, risk disclosure. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, so Joseph will be in here soon. Uh, can everyone hear me and uh, see my screen? Just make sure that uh, uh, broadcasting correctly here. If you could just type in a yes in the uh, advanced hashtag advanced webinar. So let's see. Uh, yeah, the link, there is no link to the webinar here. It is in the streaming uh, room uh, there, Mr. Whiskey Rider. Uh, so, uh, yeah, check it out in there. Anyway, I'll answer that question uh, uh, here in the voice channel. Okay. All right, guys. Well, let's get started here. Uh, Jay Trader comes in in, in a little bit. Uh, he's always, he always comes in about... Uh, 10 or 15 minutes uh, uh, later he's finishing up his trading room uh, and um, I want to uh, Tom will stream live today as well it's after the webinar though okay so uh, uh, typically uh, I look for him right after the webinar but uh, uh, you know he, he's scheduled at least for 12 uh, east coast time okay all right um, all right let's take a look at the uh, the market here and uh, I hope you guys caught this move uh, saw this move saw the order flow in here uh, I thought it was pretty easy read looking for this move down and this break of the channel here uh, break through this uh, uh, 4440 area here and looking for continuation down to this high liquidity here uh, hasn't gotten there quite yet uh, it's come pretty close but uh, not yet to 4425 uh, a few different things to look at in the read on this, and I'll go over it in a second. I just wanted to mention um, and shout out uh, to uh, Bowie uh, yesterday and this, um, uh, <laughs> I made the uh, video recording here. Uh, good morning, David. Um, the video recording about uh, uh, order flow and VWAP uh, from yesterday. So in fact, let me, let me show you where that is. If you want to look for the recordings, uh, this is where you can find them. Okay, on our YouTube channel, uh, just scroll down a bit here, uh, go to Bookmap, uh, search for Bookmap on YouTube, you'll find it, uh, and then live streaming here, uh, and this is the one. Okay, so uh, uh, it's uh, uh, titled here uh, Order Flow, VWAP, and Market Structure, and some. This is exactly what we're looking at here in terms of a breakout. We were looking for the breakout of the VWAP here. VWAP was holding it down. Uh, there was high liquidity here, but we noticed that the volume coming in. Uh, we're looking for the break of this 4450 to 55 and then 60 and then maybe 65. Came pretty close to 65, but didn't didn't uh, do anything more than that. And this is where uh, Bowie is looking for the move and the tag back down to VWAP here. So, it, you know, there's market structure in here. Uh, this is um, it VWAP relates to it uh, as well or maybe creates it uh, doesn't matter there's trading around it here this is where we got the breakout this is where we got the retest where it broke out again here there's kind of a flag pattern or a breakout a little bit of a pullback and then a pretty strong breakout uh, and then look at the pullback to it 
Okay. Now let's also take a look at, and, and you can see the structure in here and look at the break of it here, break of the, of this swing and this structure here, uh, and, uh, and, and nice move to the downside. Okay. So this is kind of a, a pivot line in here basically, but it relates to VWAP. Okay. So if you are a VWAP trader, you like the VWAP, uh, great. Uh, look for it to line up with order flow events uh, in here. And it lined up pretty nicely uh, yesterday. Uh, you can see this kind of really, really important kind of break of it, a uh, breakout of it, retest to it, a break of it again, and then uh, uh, everything underneath here again, um, uh, down below VWAP, but then another break of it here. Uh, and then uh, tested and bounced kind of back and forth off it. And then the close is really kind of convoluted here on VWAP. Uh, but it, it held, you know, rather nicely. Um, you know, the uh, these these were kind of false breakdowns of it. Uh, again, I, look at your market structure. This is where it came to, right? This is where that pullback came to. It came to here. Uh, just line these things up with your um, your higher time frame way of trading is, is, is my suggestion. Uh, and... Um, uh, or a consideration there uh, that that's it um, all right so let's look at the uh, live market in here uh, and before I do that let's do a little more market structure on the higher time frame uh, daily chart here on the left hourly in the middle 15 minute here on the right uh, you can see the um, again market structure holding pretty nicely here uh, on this uh, uh, hourly chart uh, the uh, and the daily as well uh, Anyway, like uh, up to these kinds of swings up here, this little swing here, and then uh, now we're breaking down a bit. Uh, and then here's the 15 minute chart here. Uh, this was our gap from uh, uh, the other day, but um, uh, looking for that to fill now, uh, today. Uh, here, here, here come the sellers now. Uh, there was a little gap this morning uh, in regular trading hours. You can see it right in here, uh, and it already filled it, and then looking for the the if it this is why i thought it was an easy read due to this structure in here uh on the candlestick chart why this was an easy read to the downside uh was we filled the gap see a big wick and see another big wick here looking for the breakdown uh and and the follow through uh and still looking for further uh, uh down to 4420 all right so uh, and we know there's high liquidity here at 25 Right. So it hasn't hasn't quite gotten to there yet. But it came pretty, pretty close. Uh, so anyway, that's where we're going to line up this and this understanding of market structure with this in here in book map. All right. So uh, the um, uh, the back and forth in here, high liquidity in here at 4440. Uh, and then yeah, you can see them trade into it and through it uh, back down to this high liquidity at 35 uh, and also 30. Okay, so uh, we're still bearish here. Uh, we're outside of this range here. We're looking for it to start to trend. Right now we have a double distribution here uh, and looking for the move back down to 30 uh, and then 25. Okay, so 20 was kind of our level, uh, but the high liquidity is here at 25. So again, this is where like you can use this to your advantage. Uh, we're looking for 20 and maybe you would be on your candlestick chart as well. And it might go there, but the liquidity is here this is the game uh, and they're adding more into the book as you can see it was uh, kind of orange and they're adding more in here around that level and then it gets red in here as well so they're adding into this area here um, uh, along with it all right how about some stops and icebergs considerations let's take a look here um, and uh, I was demoing this so I might have might have some yeah I need to kind of uh, play with that a little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay, so my iceberg's still up here. Um, another one trading right now. It just got filled. It got filled, and and you can see the bump here in the in the sub chart here, but uh, it's not on the chart because I filtered it out. Okay, so if you don't see it on the chart, but you're getting the reading, you you know why? Uh, it's because of the filtering. Uh, I'm using the filter here, um, the um, uh, automatic threshold here, uh, and it's looking at, it has to be at least 616 in order to display here. That's a little high. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll bring it down a bit here uh, and look at now 321 using the uh, multiplier here. And, and I'm using 60 minutes here uh, as well. 
All right. Uh, everyone can hear me, right? Uh, it seems to be, yeah, it, it's broadcasting correctly. Uh, eighth trader, I, I don't know why you don't have voice. That's weird. Okay. I, I don't I don't know what what to tell you. Um, it, it sounds like a, a, it's probably a sound setting or something. All right, so let's see. This is getting a little slippery in here. Um, we're still looking for the move down uh, into this high liquidity here uh, and the trending move. Um, at least, you know, we're in a new range, as you guys can see. Uh, we had C, uh, retail sales this morning. Um, and, uh, yeah, Sam Sam says uh, try, try leaving. Well, <laughs> you're not going to be able to hear me anyway. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, leave uh, Discord or rejoin, uh, restart Discord. All right, uh, so here's, here's the breakdown here uh, that we see, pretty strong move, uh, continued here. Um, buyers coming in, so we're, we're seeing a little bit of market structure in here, down here, and then kind of a lift immediately back up, uh, and then it's kind of bouncing around in here. Here's your VWAP as well, uh, curling back down. Uh, and the VWAP is, is uh, actually pretty nice here. It's, it's aligned with a low volume node here, as well as uh, the uh, where it broke from here. Right, so we're looking for these sellers. Uh, here they come. They're already a kind of at the bottom of the range here, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, looking for the move down here. Uh, that's the primary scenario. Okay, to this 25 area here. Now I, I just imagine there's going to be some sort of shenanigans in here uh, before we get there. All right, so we're going to keep an eye on it and look for something that really tells us. So here's already a pullback to where it it just started to break a bit here. Okay, uh, and uh, looking for the continuation. It's a low volume pullback and looking for those sellers. Okay, here they come. Let's see. Um, so anyway, uh, did you, oh, good morning, uh, Joseph. All right, we're, we're, all, we're all set then. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, we'll cover a low volume pullback another time. We, we covered it in detail um, last week or maybe two weeks ago. Uh, great, great setup here. Uh, in fact, JTrader kind of does something similar uh, using stocks in huge moves, though. And he's looking for low volume pullbacks to his moving averages. So let's turn it over to Joseph uh, and let him, him take it away here. Uh, and uh, I'll stop uh, sharing my screen. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, bookmap traders. Good morning, Joseph. How are you doing? Uh, good, buddy. I'm just in a trade on SPCE, so I will cover that when okay. we start. Sure. Let's uh, let's see here. Let me get to your. Go ahead and share. Can you see uh, SPC and bookmap? Yes, hold on. Yes, excellent. Okay, so welcome traders for another uh, lesson. So I'm actually uh, trading SPC. Uh, SPC yesterday had a lot of volatility and uh, I'm just gonna show you what happened. So basically this push from uh, 880, so it's a $8 stock, but it's not a small cap. It's a $2 billion company. Uh, they had news, it pushed all the way up, all the way up, and we had a peak over here around 11. So from 8.8 .8 until 11, uh, we had one dip on the J-lines, second dip on the J-lines. And you can see until the zone is basically uh, blue, over here, aqua, you don't want to look for a short. Uh, then this morning, I was uh, uh, not fast enough to trade this. I saw some traders in the room, they were calling this and uh, i think they they got it very good because we popped just near the j lines over here 1050 which is the spike that we've seen over here right uh this spike over here 1050 push and then we started to see some uh some unwind just one second traders i need to modify a few things uh we're gonna put this Okay, like this. 
And we're going to put also our sweep indicator. Alright, so now we have also the sweep indicator on. So we started to fill this uh, J lines over here around 1050, so perfect to the uh, half dollar number, and we started to unwind over here. Okay, uh, so uh, you can see over here that now we don't have any more that uh, blue magenta area, but we have over here the pink magenta area. Sorry, uh, not the blue uh, aqua area, but the magenta. We started to unwind, unwind, unwind. And I was looking for a short into this zone, but it was very choppy. You see, we go above the VWAP, VWAP is this red one, and then we fail. And I didn't like really this price section over here. So I was waiting for a main breakdown uh, because I was seeing the stop and then right away down, the stop, right away down, the stop, right away down. So I was looking for some kind of trend line. And then I look at the bigger picture, okay? So I always try to, uh, you know, uh, use a maybe five or 15 minute chart, uh, zoom out and start looking at the picture because if now I put a 15 minute chart, you will see this ascending triangle. And then over here we have the breakdown and I decided to short exactly that 1019. So I'm short 1019 right now. And what I'm looking to do, I'm looking basically to hold my position until we won't break this uh, uh, pink magenta line over here, okay? Anybody is short today on um, um, uh, SPCE traders? So the point is, you know, to look only for that, boom, perfect trend line break, and then you start looking for that unwind. Uh, it's not really difficult. And uh, I'm looking to put uh, uh, order the flow over here to give me the confirmation. Because right now you can see that, okay, on the chart, we have the trend line break, right? But also I need to see that on, uh, on book map. So I wanna see also this. And therefore that is my low risk entry. Right away over here, we have a sweep, goes down, goes down over here. I would imagine to see maybe another one on a wash until this low. At this low, I want to cover the first partial of my trade, okay? So always analyze when we have buyers stepping in uh, or like in this case, all these magenta dots that are sellers. So now let's continue to watch the, the uh, price section together over here. I think it will be interesting because this is, has a, live, a lot of volatility. Uh, there's a trader who traded much better than me over here was uh, Scofford. So uh, I traded that J-line rejection, you can see, uh, short more, cover the dip, short cover, short J-line rejection, J-line rejection, I mean, this is, this is really perfect, okay? This is perfect. So uh, look to trade those patterns. Now, we have near a previous support, 995, and you can see over here, 990 also, the highest liquidity, uh, heat map around uh, 44,000. Yep. So I want to cover partial, you know, before getting into that dip in order to lock in some profits. It's already a decent move. So we shorted this area 1019. I was risking this side 1033, so 14 cents. Now it's basically down over here uh, 20 cents. I want a little bit more. I want to cover down here. So I have my two R and I'm ready. And I'm happy about it. Nine and seven. I'm zooming in, you see some bars coming in. I also look at the tape, how it's getting faster. I'm gonna filter this, we're gonna put this to four, 
999 or maybe even 10k now maybe 5000 is is good yeah beautiful trade beautiful. joseph thank you very simple you know very simple uh, i'm having this uh week now i didn't calculate today but having this week 87 percent win rate and for the month above 80 so uh pretty good with a very good risk reward ratio uh, the point for me is to select trades so not really to trade every single thing that moves uh when i have stops to keep it very tight and then you know trying to hold my position because for me not covering anything is uh means um having patience and also looking for the correct risk reward if we don't let traders you know our wins our big winners to run you will cut too much and by that time that this will unwind you will reduce your r's so there's like a strategy when i want to trail okay it's not like you know i'm just holding because sometimes reverses and you don't get any kind of profit so you have to find like um, uh, greeks used to say in media partis means uh, you know the the right thing is in the middle so you have basically to let it run but let it run also means to lock in when you have the uh say uh parameters the signals that tells you okay now it's time to lock in partial okay so good morning amar <clears throat> good morning alec morning charo vitunus uh og that indicator is a proprietary indicator for a small cap room uh, uh in this case uh small cap room members uh yes samar we will check that uh just wanted to cover at least partial on my trading on spce so over here we have two times this bounced uh and rejected over here the first time so careful over here to trade direct to the data and start looking for more like, you know, a trend line break and then shorting. Always use yes for this as well. So let's look at SPCE. SPCE, very nice pattern over here. Very nice pattern. 997. We are almost at 2R getting a two-hour zone over here all right so 996 out half on spce now traders let's look over here because they started to put some support you see 995 and then 990 so they're starting to build a wall of buyers over here right it's like a, a main liquidity zone right this is the demand zone and if we break 990 i would love to see still more unwind so let's check hourly chart uh, we see over here the price next target possible target could be down here into the 945 this would be amazing for us and then down here to the eight. This is SPCE. 15 minute chart. So yeah, you can see this uh, um, bear flag, right? Breakdown. So we should uh, see more and wide over here. We should see more and wide. Let's see also LCID. Okay, we had a nice juicy Jalen rejection. Second one over here. Uh, this morning I was trading also hook. I took a good trade. So I shot it hook only the first time. I shot it over here and then I covered partials. Uh, I traded Sophie and I'm still short. I shorted this exactly over here. Shared in the room I trade uh, with Pedro. So I cover first partial down here, and now I'm holding. And then I short a BKKT, and I short it down here BKKT, 
cover it over here and now waiting beer and bkkt yep. so bkkt over here could be interesting traders yep. i'm gonna put this on a book map So I'm watching BKKT very attentively. All right. So you can see decent buyers right now. I'm gonna filter this at 4999. So levels on the start. We have uh, supply above. Uh, this morning did a breakout over here 850 so this is a breakout stock volume increasing you can see also over here nice juicy curl i'm not looking for now any trade unless this goes parabolic or into a high huge level of resistance of bookmap that's the point generally we'll tend to look at half dollar numbers whole dollar numbers and this is an extension play okay so very very hard to trade these if you don't have a, i would say um order flow uh education knowledge and also uh some tape reading over here now 890 and 9 9 is the main liquidity area so we'll look at 9 and we'll continue to manage, manage over here SPCE Look over here, traders. Until I don't see sellers, I'm not looking for any kind of sell over here. I know that you think, wow, this is high, we can short it, but you have to wait for that extension, ideally into this nine. So again, what I'm doing is my trading, uh, don't follow, you're only here to learn, okay? This morning I had uh, something like uh, eight trades, one was a scratch, uh, six were wins, one was a stop. So before I remember what we are talking about, right? The zone, the zone over here is uh, blue magenta, blue, sorry, aqua is pushing. So this is still like bullish. Uh, this is BKKT. So we're talking about a small market cap company and this company, buddy, look over here what it's doing in the 50 minutes are. So it's grinding every single day, right? And if you look over here, the last few days, we started to form a cup pattern with really an handle, really, this seems like coming out from the, the chart pattern, you know, uh, beginner techni technical analysis book. Breakout this morning over here, but I never buy on the breakouts because often what they can do, they can push, boom, right away they stuff, they sell, fake, and trap. Now, I'm more in this plan I showed this morning in the room, looking for a breakout, then a retest, and if I have this retest and curls, then I'm looking too long. Price is still grinding. There's not a short over here.
currently over here at the 885 you can see another buyer came 886 over here 7000 another 7000 there we go so popping into this uh, 890 let's look for that nine Maybe I'll unwind in today. So Trader, I'm going to explain over here. This is a screenshot that my wife sent. And it's about uh, NVIDIA and Facebook. And it's about how to read the price section. Then, of course, we need, you know, uh, book map uh, to, to confirm this. But I need to spot over here how the price section works. So when this bar opens, this is a, even if you see red, this is a bullish bar, right? It's red only because we are below the J lines over here. So this is Nvidia and this is Facebook. So when we dip and then start pushing, this is like exhaustion selling. And then what happens that over here we have buyers in control, buyers in control, and they start pushing it and you can see this grind. The same thing over here. So this was Facebook. And we open this bar and then it dips. So this bar, if you look at uh, with a five second chart because this is a one minute, right? Or you look at with uh, book map over here, this is an Andover. Okay, so you will see like a cup pattern in this fraction over here. And then you can start buying, buying, buying because these are often like fake washes, or basically it's not really fake washes, it's really somebody over here selling, but is right away bought up. So this is only to understand the price section, I think is very important for everybody. All right, let's look over here. We're going to that nine yeah. volume is uh, yeah pretty low. We are 100k per minute, nothing crazy. One of the two, maybe mm -hmm. this is good. I want to see now a fast push over here to nine, and then a stuff. And only in that case scenario, I will look to short this. SPC is bouncing traders. So let's check this one second. So we are looking for that main fade below 990. We showed it 1019. We took the trend line break over here. Okay, so we were taking this trend line break, came down, broke of this 10. You can see sellers, and then there were no more sellers over here, 995, which you see the support held. Then they canceled, so they basically start moving up, up, and then also over here are the buyers 1010. Now they're pushing, they're trying to reverse the position. So when I see something like this, the remaining part, get out, don't be stubborn. You already took your position, you already take, uh, took your trade, your win, that's it. Sophie, I'm still holding. So looking at book map, it's very simple to spot the pattern over here. Uh, when we were over here, 13.15, I said, start looking for a stuffed uh, movement. In this case, we had a top at 13.24. 
it pushed over here big soak at 13 25 26 and then from that level all unwind on here till 13, uh, 1270 some big high liquidity at 896 you see this level over here so we are below this 90 may this line that you see this uh, green line over here is the one minute j lines no this is that five and 90 may right you can even uh even only use uh a 90 may traders right so fail not short uh let's check pitten Hit and pop into the J lines. Let's see if we can get a short here. to see more sellers over here the 55 56 i don't see big sellers for now on pitten so i'm waiting no short over here for me first main seller came So this is a first level of resistance. You see, they're trying to stack 54, 55. So short over here, 54, 55, with a very low risk, could be a good one. Starting to look over here, if we make a first lower low, and I'm still looking for BKKT, if it can push up to that nine. So let's focus on BKKT first. You see the buyers came back in, BKKT. Breakout over here is pushing. Eight ninety seven. Eight ninety nine. There we are. Let's see if we're going to break this nine and then we're going to have a stuff. So this is how I'm looking at the trade right now, only using bookmap. We had the first rejection from this um, uh, 899, not short yet. Thank you, Mark. My second Tesla.
Thank you, Jay. So let's check Python over here. So still up trending. None a huge heat map, you know, that uh, gives us a low risk level of entry. Sophie is also pushing, so waiting for Sophie at the previous high, 1325, SPC at 1030, and we're still over here on BKKT. Micro support 888. If you break 888, expect to see a wash over here to the 879. My monitors over here, I'm watching uh, BKKT, the one you can see, but also watching Netflix, Pit, uh, Python, Tesla, uh, Apple, yes, uh, Sophie, uh, SPC, so some stocks, and also Bitcoin. So soak big over here at the nine. You can see this big dot, right? So this means soak. There we are. And soak means that basically they were uh, absorbing in this case all the uh, buyers they started to then dump uh, buyers now we'll see if they're gonna hold this 880 support or they're gonna uh, drop it you know like uh, get away over here get exhaust and then we'll eventually drop into the previous support area which was this at 870 where we have yeah, the first, I would say, decent support over here. We have around uh, uh, 15,000 down here. We're still trying to hold the price, this is A95, A93. Port A95. So they still don't want to dump this over here. So our plan to look for a short for an extension to nine uh, didn't take place. Therefore, I'm not really pushing. Um, I'm stopping to watch this. Not really interesting for me right now. I'm gonna focus more on Tesla, which instead is having, I would say, a better pattern over here. So when I trade Tesla, the first thing is that I'm looking as well at ES and also in Q. Yes, you can see it on the right up here. So we'll put only two charts. We'll put Tesla above and ES below. Joseph, do you think, um, I mean, uh, you have such clarity in your setups and you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, but I'm just wondering, like, as a trader, 
-hmm. when you started to really um, you know make a lot of money was it what was the thing that you would attribute it to uh, the most uh, I would say confidence and uh, conviction in sizing so basically uh, when I had the stats uh, so that I could see my setup uh, working so journaling uh, back testing uh, looking at the different scenarios and how it performs your strategy so all that gives you confidence you know you can you don't need to trade 10 years to do this you can even be a trader like with three, four, six months of experience, but knowing how to back test to journal and already starting to create some sort of strategy that can give you uh, confidence when you trade. When you have the confidence, so when you know how, how much you're going to make or how much you're going to lose when you have the setup, how many times per average will you know come out during the, the year, the, the week, the month, then you have an edge. So having that edge, uh, you can start sizing. And then you can start making money because you know for example you know you will make 55 percent win rate but you know when you will win you'll win like three four time three four r versus one hour stop then it's really gonna pay you a lot but doing this takes a lot of time so a lot of traders don't reach this level because they get um, frustrated before they think it's easy when it's not everybody wants to come to this job saying oh i'm gonna make millions i want to make millions well, first start considering to make 100 bucks a day. If you can be consistent in that, means you have a good strategy and then nothing changes, you know, besides mentality, emotions, from making $100 a day to make like 10K a day. So really, there's not the big difference. There's bigger difference in experience in how you manage yourself and how you can control yourself. Because as you know, uh, our ego, our self can be a double sword edge, can work with us so make us improve faster uh, but also can be uh, something that um, obstacles us and basically works against us so this is what i think Bruce. at least this was my my experience in this yeah great great answer uh thank you you're welcome so look over here traders uh, why i'm have over here es and tesla together so I'm going to do a little bit of a parenthesis over here. Uh, this is a five minute chart, but the same chart I can spot it with a 50 minutes or with one minute. I don't really need to necessarily trade a five minute chart. So this is a normal J lines, which is a 14 and 17, right? If you go to put this on a one minute chart, this will be 72 and 89. This is a three minute J lines. So it's a slower uh, version of this. And this is the even slower J lines, which is a normal 7289 on a five minute chart. Wait, so on a one minute chart would be 360 and 445. Now, if I look at Tesla, I don't need necessarily to look at Tesla. You can see over here the guide being yes all morning. This is the 930. And you can see the pop and fill over here on Tesla, fading all the way down. The same thing over here, sorry, Tesla fading all the way down. The same thing over here, yes. So now Tesla is bouncing and yes, over here is trying to bounce. Therefore, I'm not really looking anymore for a short, okay? If instead we would have been uh, uh, seeing a trend line break and then the price over here fading, that was exactly like we had the SPC before, okay, traders? All right, so now let's look also at Sophie, being that Tesla is reversing over here. So Sophie has this high around 1330. I traded this morning Sophie. We have a uh, main resistance 1320. And see if we can push this 1320 and stuff and then look into short again. Mm. 
buyers are in look at this tape the majority of these are buyers so we see like uh, two-thirds green over here times in sales versus the the sellers and you can see over here the price got to this j-line j-line started to curl push over here so this could be interesting on an extension play short ideally this 1325 1330 so looking for a move over here this level 1325 30 stuff and then looking for a short and something like this can pay very much because over here before we shorted 1319 and it went uh to 1280 even lower at uh, 12 cents so it's like a 50 cents move So this is a main level of liquidity 1320 corresponds to my level of golden zone over here 1320 you can see on a five minute chart each bar is making a higher low Some sellers around 1314, 1313, but it's still not my level to short because I will short something like this only if we prove that uh, longs are trapped, that longs are basically exhausted. In the meantime, traders, Netflix, J line rejection, Pitten curling and pushing. Our sellers, 13.12, So recap of what we're doing this morning. I'm going to put over here SPC so you can understand uh, the trade we took. gonna make this smaller so we can focus a little bit more on book map okay so that's the trend line i was looking on spc all right and i was looking for a main pattern called jayla rejection in this case if you are fast enough at the gate, you can trade the pop and fill over here at the gate and look for a short around 1040, 1045. This is a perfect short from our J lines at the open called pop and fill. And a trade like this guarantees you basically almost 50 cents per share. Uh, a lot of top over here, you can see a book map. We had a lot of uh, pushes, washes, pushes, washes. So I didn't like the price section over here and I stood away and I started looking how it works together with the chart pattern. So we had our ascending triangle. In this case, with the breakdown, I short over here and we can see on book map this uh, breakdown, short over here, cover over here, and then the remaining I cover over here. Just when it starts to reclaim this 90 May. So this red line that you see over here, on this chart is an anime and you can see the price started basically reclaiming and pushing over here so that is for spce uh the second one yeah jo joseph that's a that's a beautiful uh, chart there 
uh, and, a, and a lot of help there with the heat map uh, on yeah. the, down there. Um, yeah, into high liquidity there. And then they're still on the bid underneath it, you know. Exactly, exactly. And it was nice to see how they moved from this level over here up and then more up. Because over here we can see trader that we had a decent buyer, right? He was placed over here. And then when he didn't get filled, basically only partially got filled over here because we can see the dip below. Then he moved over here and then maybe it was him that moved over here, but we can see a reversal, right? A reversal over here of the scenario. And then they started to push up again. Now we are rejecting from this level of liquidity around 1045, but we are near the open level. Uh, and I'm not really looking to trade this for now. Okay, so I need to wait a little bit. I'm not looking to trade this right now. Uh, BKKT was the second one I was watching. And uh, we saw a push into this main liquidity area. I saw a trader over here, uh, one of the guys in, in the room. The short exactly that pop, we we're looking at a $9 pop over here. And he took the fade, so good trade. Uh, personally, I didn't take it. I was uh, I was waiting for more. Uh, I would say a little bit more push, and then unwind. So I wanted really to see the longs exhausted. And over here we had the big soak because they trade over here a decent amount of size. Then I started to fade, and is this bar over here? And then you can see where we dumped into the first one minute daylines. Uh, has luck. So over here. So Tesla, you can see a morning fade. The best A plus setup scenario over here today on Tesla happens in the first few minutes of the gate, in the first five minutes, I would say. You can see the price pops, goes above J lines, come back below. This area over here, 9.15 and 60, 9.15, this is your area to short, which is this area over here. Then you apply your stop above, 9.17 and 50, and beautiful and wide over here, okay? I missed this morning, Tesla. I missed this trade. Um, I had others, uh, I would say, in um, on my screens. This I had like another screen and didn't pay attention, so I missed this trade on Tesla. So no profit for me. And now I'm simply waiting sidelines until I will have the next uh, A plus setup to trade. Uh, yes, OG, the clouds on J line represent the one and three and the five minutes exactly. Uh, then we had hook. Again, I shared all these trades and called them live and explained why we took it in the room. But this was a, I would say a pretty good example of a setup that you can see up here is written gap and extension. We showed this uh, white line. And when we showed it that, we were looking for a fast fail. So you can see the open over here, pop and fail. And then even if you see buyers over here in the first part of the move, right? Then the second part of the move, we start to see sellers over here. And then we see some buyers. And then again, sellers. So the price is unwind, it's forming lower highs, lower lows. No reason for me to long. You can see again, more sellers. And then they started to reclaim and push it until the 215. Now they're pushing it again. So why you think the stock traders with the fluff news, a very bad uh, daily chart with huge amount of dilution is pushing, okay? Uh, basically, it's pushing because we have a high institutional ownership. So when stocks have a high institutional ownership, they tend to really, I would say, trap traders. So that's the reason why I never buy on support. Uh, never buy on the breakout story. I always buy on the dips or on a pullback. 211 over here. Look over here. 210, 211. This is your breakout. Why I tell you it's a breakout? Why I tell you this is a pullback because the price goes up, dips over here near the 90 May, inside bar, we have a wedge, uh, or in this case, yeah, wedge, small wedge or, or pennant, and then it's pushing up, so break over here. 
What I'm waiting, the price probably to go to 18, 220. Two fifteen, still pushing. You can see that we don't see sellers over here, right? Still pushing strong. So buyers right now are in control. There we are. They put a support to eleven. Break down the support. Some sellers over here. You see 211, 210 now, even 209. For now, it's rejected as a double top. Still holding this previous support, 206, 207, which is this level over here on the chart. Breakdown on Tesla. This is a good breakdown. The fact is that you can see this distribution pattern. So often you will see in the market when it starts making lower high, lower lows, you start looking for this kind of pattern, right? So same lows and then lower highs over here. Nice breakdown. There's simply no range over here. There's no reason to trade Tesla. I will never trade Tesla in, in some kind of scenario like this. Nonsense, really nonsense. You want to trade Tesla when you have an uptrend like this, right? And does this seem, look this trend, okay? Does this seem the same thing that we're having right now, traders? Absolutely not. Right now we are at the same open level of before, we are lateral, we are sideways. There's no way we can trade this. Therefore, as a trader, you won't find every single day opportunities to make money, right? Uh, well, actually we do, but the point is you have to have patience. If there's nothing to trade, I won't trade. Okay, don't be stubborn, don't be stubborn. So simply waiting on Tesla over here. Apple. The same thing. NVIDIA, the same thing over here. Uh, we had BA bouncing until it doesn't break 220. I'm not looking to trade this. BABA bouncing over here until it breaks the high of the day, 127.50, and not looking to trade. Let's look at Sophie where it's just pushing. And Sophie has a previous high, 
20, 1330, pardon, 1330 over here. So, Sophie, Mabir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought Brucey was probably drinking a coffee, but she's not. <laughs> so did you get a fancy coffee machine in there or not? Well, pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. All right. That's important. Yes, absolutely for a trader. It's a must. Traders, look over here. It's going up. And I'm looking. There's 25, 30 stuff. Now, if it happens to stuff, this is recorded so we can watch this together again. I think it could be a very good, uh, useful tool to understand how stuff happens. And what I'm looking for is the break of this 25 right away, boom, slam down. Or a break of this 30, boom, down. Why I'm looking at those two levels? Because those are two most important levels on the chart. They are uh, the pre-market high level. Sorry, the high of the day level, that's the point. Almost 500, and because I lost on uh, Snap, otherwise it was good. Yeah. So I'm looking over here, traders, at the 25, having patience, not starting to skill in. I know how these extensions work pretty good, so I don't underestimate them. I'm waiting for only the setup that I want, otherwise nothing. Very slow over here. Still holding this 9MA with this green zone over here. Eighteen over here. Now seller came at thirteen twenty. Careful because we could see a, a wash. More seller seventeen. More seller sixteen. So you can see how it's going down and how at each level we have more sellers.
So a hook went to this previous side, 215. Small unwind. Sophie, I'm still waiting. SPC, nothing for now. A nice juicy support over here. Uh, BKKT, uh, high institutional ownership. Let me see, or it was a small one, this. Because when we have high institutional ownership traders, it basically going to tend to hold more. So I'm going to check it one second. This is our extended play, so multi-day runner, BKKT. Uh, 36% institutional, okay, so 36. Uh, medium uh, institutional ownership level. Look, it's still lateral. Sophie, still not the high. So we have a question here about, um, um, you know, any of your favorite books uh, on trading, top two or three? Uh, definitely uh, the ones of uh, Mark Vinervini, also a friend of mine. Uh, those are great, a great trader, uh, great for mentality as well. So that definitely is what I suggest to you. Uh, I like also, uh, let me see what was over here, more than about techniques, you know, because techniques, basically, I think it's uh, the best stuff you can find, at least for how we trade in our room. Um, it's about, for me, mentality. It's for me about discipline. It's for me about the formation of a trader, not only on the technical point of view, but also under, I would say, the a psychological point of view all right um, some of the uh, books that i prefer uh, let me see over here was put in this yeah one is of course mark douglas and um how to think like a professional trader. That is, I would say, something that you should all uh, you should all read, and and uh, I think it's pretty good. Uh, and then even some stuff from Stephen Goldstein, which I had a podcast a few weeks ago. He's a, a coach for traders and entrepreneurs, and we go over the. Uh, the skills that a trader needs to have uh, mentally and uh, I would say also, um, yeah, more, more mentally than uh, anything else. Because, you know, a, a set up a strategy you can learn in one, two, three, even four months uh, doesn't need a lifetime. But then you have to uh, work on yourself a lot. That's the most difficult thing of a trader. So you have to have a good mindset, you have to have discipline, you have to have like uh, uh, discipline in the sense that you are not afraid to take losses. So you have to accept also these red days. Uh, so these for me are the things that you should do. Then, as I said, I'm really like um, mm, honest. It's about the experience that you do in the market more than reading the books because the books are so nice. You know, everything is painted so great over there. But when you are have already a great community, 
like we're showing things today over here, or you can like give your feedback. Already that is more than you can find in a book. So over here, Sophie, this is an example for me of discipline. Because there are already two, three times that I would have traded this. First, I would have traded long, but I'm not trading this long because this company is disgusting, uh, shitty, if I can say this. And uh, I'm not really looking to trade something like this long. I mean, look this, what it did. I'm not looking to trade Tesla. Okay, I love to trade Tesla, Apple, I love to long, but not really something like this over here. Um, if it had really such a beautiful, amazing news and fantastic fundamentals, okay, yes. But over here, I wanted to trade a couple of times short on the stuff, and then I want to short over here in the stuff. But I still waited because I'm waiting, as I said, this 1325, 1330, which are the high of day. Okay, now maybe it won't go anymore there. It's fine, but I, I'm still respecting my plan. Okay, that's the most important thing for me. I want to see one second snap. So still lateral. Facebook after the drop this morning, still lateral. MU lateral over here. Pit on lateral. So I'm not really interested in that. Netflix, maybe that most interesting one. Below the previous day low. Breakdown over here. So Netflix is the one to follow for me in the afternoon. Yeah, this is the hourly chart. We have a main support over here around 383 and 80. Below the support, next target over here 390, and then over here 384, 385. Yeah. Uh, Netflix definitely is on my watch list for the afternoon. And I'm going to explain. Yeah, thank you, Mark. I uh, will just check now. What I'm, uh, what I'm going to trade over here is exactly this. So if you have your is this. This is what I'm looking to trade. This is what I'm looking to trade. That's it. This is what I'm looking on Netflix. So not very difficult. Trend line break as well. Trend line break as well. So this is exactly my plan that I'm spotting on, uh, that I want to, to wait for on Netflix. Nothing else. Let's check on Tesla. I want to see also the order flow. So Tesla is unwinding, but we're still above this um, previous main support, 907. So I'm waiting. Nice wash over here. Probably the sweep indicator would have worked. Okay, traders, we have the remaining five minutes. Uh, any questions? Okay. No, it's pretty pretty quiet in here. Uh, our Amar is talking about the, the Tesla breakdown uh, with the NQ. Uh, yes, the only thing, buddy. Careful because we are above that hourly J lines, okay, at nine zero three. So careful for that. Now we still have like some range. Before it was important support 9003, 904. Yeah, could become an interesting trade. Could become an interesting trade. A trend line break over here. Oh, let me check. Yeah, I'm definitely going to watch over here at Tesla for the afternoon. Yes. But careful, this 903904 main level of support. Yeah, Gadzu are proprietary these indicators, but have a J lines is just having a 72, 89 uh, exponential moving average. Uh, these numbers are from the uh, Fibonacci expansion code. So I've been using them since 2003, 2004. And uh, uh then also you can use on other time frames with other i would say uh parameters but the most important thing is that for now you look for a 7289 and for example this is sorry this is an easy way to spot things 
And we can see over here at the open, we had the perfect JLAM rejection on Tesla to short. And then we had a second one. And then over here, nothing for me because I'm looking for more pattern. So now we can look if we're going to have another pattern over here, right? So let's start seeing Sophie. For example, on Sophie, uh, when we took the short up here, look where it went, the main J lines over here. And then started a recurl and gave us a long entry. Of course, J lines like this means nothing. You'll have more losses than wins. But Jalen is using our strategy that I teach. Uh, you will have a very powerful strategy. So some selling over here on Sophie. Now back to the J lines. All right, traders, if we don't have any more questions, we can wrap it up over here for the day. So it was a good morning. Uh, some good opportunities. SPC was the best one. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Bruce, you want to add anything else? No, no. Great, uh, great webinar. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, let's, let's wrap it up and uh, we'll do it again next week, next Wednesday. Okay, Twitter. So in the meantime, take care. Always write to Bruce 24 seven He's always available. <laughs> and uh, 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 let's, let's see, Lewis over here. I think he has a question. Sorry, before you go. How could, how do you choose the list of the stocks you look at? Okay, so for big caps, I always look for the, I would say 30, 40 uh, stock that I have in my list. And uh, in that case, I start looking at the direction, if it's inside the previous day range or it's on a breakout or a breakdown. So I'm looking mostly for spot of volatility. And uh, instead for uh, small caps or even mid caps, I start looking for the main gappers and uh, the main gappers with at least 20% gap, uh, with at least half a million volume uh, traded and then I start looking to do my forecast, which is a precise, I would say, um, way that I define if a stock is going to be on my watch list for a short or for a long. It's uh, a little bit more complex than this. I mean, we would need to take like a couple of hours to explain this, but this is basically what I do. Plus, I have Bitcoin every single day in futures that I uh, trade. Uh, no, I don't really like the script screener on TOS or IB. Uh, for uh, for the gaps, you can simply look at uh, any single broker having those parameters. Or, for example, I use personally at Sutrade, which is the app for our community, for our small cap room. Um, and uh, it's very, very simple. So just look at the gappers, the volume, half a million plus, and 20% at least of gap. You don't want to trade something that maybe is 40%, 50% gap, but there is no liquidity. In that case, it will be you and the market maker. And if you have like a stop, you will pay a, a huge amount in terms of spread. So that will be a big loss. Liquidity is very, very important. That tells you that you have, you know, another side where you can sell, you know, supply and demand, always a shift. That's very, very important. Let's see over here, Luis, what else is saying? Uh, do you use limit orders in the market? 90% body always limit orders, but be aware that if you use limit orders when you have a squeeze or a big wash, you will probably get filled. So experience told me that you always need a, a hot key or you know an emergency key that in case something goes wrong, you get out very fast with the market order. Because the wise, let's say that you wait for a breakdown to get out, is not only you, but you and maybe other, I don't know, 1000 traders that are spotting, for example, that level as support as their stop loss level. And also you have hunters. 
hundreds of stop loss who are market makers who can be algorithm program in order to go like I would say study your behavior and then know how the human being over here behaves the retail trader behaves okay so hope this traders is uh, you know starting to get simple for you you can read better the price action uh, if you have any doubt or questions, reach out. Uh, my email is uh, team at daytraderco.co. Also want to add something. Uh, we're going to have a promo for uh, the President Day uh, for the room. And uh, we never reach out anybody on IG or Twitter or anything else. So these are all like uh, fake uh, accounts of people trying to uh you know uh, rob your money so we never reach out to anybody okay so don't really answer to anybody that uh is not j trader co that's it thank you very much traders uh see you next week thank you bruce and everybody all right thank you joseph bye bye